Here's how to build anything with DeepSeek R1, even if you have no coding experience. Today, we're gonna build an AI research agent at three different levels of complexity using DeepSeek. But what's the big deal with DeepSeek? The new AI chatbot from Chinese startup DeepSeek. Or DeepSeek. DeepSeek shaking up global tech. NVIDIA yeah. losing nearly $600 billion in market cap today alone. Well, DeepSeek R1 is one of the most revolutionary model releases I've seen since ChatGPT. You see, OpenAI, it's in trouble. DeepSeek R1 is an open source reasoning model that's just as powerful as OpenAI's O3 or O1. And the craziest part of all of this is that the model itself is open source. Open source is king. Models like DeepSeek R1 make it possible for the average person to compete with massive companies like OpenAI or Google. Another reason I love DeepSeek is that you can actually see the model's reasoning or chain of thought in its response. All of the OpenAI models don't let you see the model's reasonings, even though you are still paying for those tokens. Honestly, I think there's something magical about seeing the model reason or think through a problem. That is the best part and why I prefer the DeepSeek models over the OpenAI O1 or O3. You can build anything with DeepSeek, but to prove it to you, we're gonna build an app that can actually make money and that I know multiple founders would pay for. The idea is simple. Every business has competitors. Every business needs to keep tabs on competitors to make sure they aren't getting outcompeted. So we're gonna build an AI research agent that can take any company name and conduct threat analysis, like new features or services being launched by the competitor. And this can be expanded to build a squad of AI agents that will be able to work together to answer any question. This way, as a CEO, I don't need to constantly check up on my competitor and waste time. I can just run this agent and boom, get an Intel report with fresh info. Now we are going to start with a completely empty cursor project. So if you don't have cursor installed, Download it, it's free. Even if you have no coding experience, do not be scared to try to follow this tutorial until the end. I'm going to explain everything and you are not going to want to miss out on the product we're building together. The first thing you wanna do is open up cursor and create your main.py file. So all you need to do is right click here in the folder structure and go to new file. Once you hit new file, you type in the name main.py. Now I have a .env file as well as a couple of other main files. You can ignore those. The .env, you will need that. I'll put a link to the file in my description. It'll be a nice template for your .env file, but this will essentially store your password API keys. You don't want to share this file. Since this is the first time I'm making an API call to DeepSeek, I went to the documentation website. And right here, you could see there is a perfect example of how to make an API call to DeepSeek. So I'm going to copy that over to Cursor and I'm going to ask Cursor. I'm just going to talk to it in English and say, hey, can you please add this code and make it streamable? Actually, I'm going to say make it a chat interface where from the console, I can chat with the DeepSeek model and see token streaming output. And that's just like how you can talk to ChatGPT. You see the letters streaming in one by one. So I'm just going to ask it to do that. And you can see here it has answering with something that looks pretty good. And we did provide it with a reference, so it's not going to make any hallucinations. Now, the next thing I asked Cursor to do was import the API keys from the .env file. And these are the updates that Cursor made to the file, which is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. All we're doing here is loading the environment variables from that file that has all your API keys. And I'm not going to show it because it's exposing all my API keys. But one thing I didn't talk about was the packages that we need to install to make our programs work. So for example, in our current program that Cursor wrote for us, we have the OpenAI package, which we need to install because we need to be able to call the OpenAI SDK. So what we're going to do is, even if, for example, you have a bunch of packages and you don't know how to exactly install it, you could just ask Cursor, like, hey, which packages do I need to install? And then it'll just tell you. So you can see here, python.environment, open AI. Now we are ready to run it. So let's go ahead and run python3 main.py. And this is just going to run our code. I'll say hi. And then we're going to see if the token streaming actually works. And yes, that looks correct. Can you create an emoji Chinese flag? I don't know. I just want to see what it can do in the console. So we have created the most basic version of a DeepSeek application. And you can see just how easy it was. And the next level up of complexity is not gonna be that hard either. And yet the game that we're gonna get and the amazing application we're gonna build is gonna knock your socks off. Let's move over to 
main2. So you can either create a new main2 file or just stay in main.py. The code that we're going to do is going to use a library called Langchain. So I'm going to start by just importing some libraries that we're going to need to build this application. So Langchain is just an LLM library that helps you interface with vector stores, APIs, and tools and agents. It does a lot of things, but I'm going to explain each use case as we go through them. After I import the libraries I need, I'm going to then import Apify wrapper. And what this is going to let us do is specifically call this website content crawler bot. And what this does is it's just a utility that you can use to crawl a website and extract text content. So if you have a website like openai.com, it's going to go through all of the subdomains and extract information. If we're building a Intel crawler bot that's trying to extract information about a competitor company, for example, it's going to go through all the pages, get all the text, and that's all the data that the LLM is going to need to be able to generate a report or do anything with that information. That's what that is for. We can head back over to cursor and you see here, we're just calling the website content crawler, call actor, and we're creating this loader that's going to be loaded into Langchain. So we're going to see the next step. The URL we're using is openai.com slash news. And you can change this to be any URL you want. You can crawl or get information of any website. So the great part about this is it's very expandable. The next step is we want to initialize the vector database with the text documents that we got from the crawler bot. So for example, we went to the OpenAI website, the bot went through some maybe news articles, got some information about recent dealings with OpenAI. Now that information we want to load into a database. And you can think of this as this is going to be our DeepSeek's model, DeepSeek model's own Google. So if the DeepSeek model wants to find, for example, let's say the user has an input of, I want to find recent uh, scandals at OpenAI, just an example. So the LLM will then do a search into the vector database. I want to find things around the word scandal. And so if there are any text documents or sources in the vex vector store related to that word, now the LLM only has to search through a couple of documents instead of having to cram its context window with a bunch of information that may not be relevant to the user's query. Next up, and this is the last step. Yes, it's that easy. Finally, we want to query the vector database with a question. For example, I'm a competitor to OpenAI, generate a competitive intelligence report. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to pass a query with sources call to the index. So this is the vector store loader that's loaded with all of the information from the website. I want to find the answer to my question. So what's going to happen is the LLM is going to make that query to the vector store, get all that information, and then reason about a response. Now let's run it. But before we do that, one update I made is changed it from OpenAI, the company that we're extracting information from, to Anthropic, just because the OpenAI website is a little bit difficult to crawl. So we don't want to run into any issues there. I'm also going to change the maximum crawl pages to one, just because I want to see it return and not take too long during the crawling process for this demo. And then also I want to print out the loader when it's done, just to get a notification when it's all done crawling and we can see the next steps. So after that, I'm just going to run Python 3 main 2.py just like before, and it is done. And it did take a little bit of time. It's probably because the crawling of the website took some time and the DeepSeek R1 model does take some time to return a response as it's thinking through and reasoning about the problem. You could see the final report on the company Anthropic was generated here. You can see it's generated some nice uh, numbered lists of strategic updates and key news and partnerships. And this is exactly what I wanted. And I am very happy about this. And we are now moving to the next level of complexity. For this last level, we are going to build an AI agent that can generate these competitive intelligence reports, but also take different actions to determine how it comes across the final data it's going to use in its report. So starting from the top, we are going to import a bunch of Langchain libraries. You don't need to worry about these as before. We are going to use all of these and I'll explain them later. Up next, we want to initialize the utilities and tools that we're going to use like the Apify wrapper. So we're going to crawl a website. We're going to use that bot just like before. And then a memory saver. This is going to be part of the memory for our agent. And then of course the deep seek model itself. Next up, we want to create a tool that the agent is going to use. And it's going to decide when to use this tool, by the way, to crawl and query a website. So 
if it finds a website during a Google search, it's going to decide, hey, maybe I need to crawl this website because this is most, most likely going to have the information that the user is looking for. That is awesome. And in the first couple of lines, all we're doing is parsing. So this is the tool the agent is gonna call. It's gonna call it in a specific format like this with the URL and then the query. We are going to parse that query and then load that information of the search into the loader and then create that vector store database that has the embeddings. And then once those embeddings are loaded, we are going to run a query on that database and then return those results. Nothing too crazy at all. We are going to create some tools that we're going to use like the Cavalry search. So for this, you are going to need one more API key. And this is completely free, by the way, to use. It's just like a Google search API. And then that search API is going to be one of the tools along with the website crawler tool that we talked about before. So next up, we create our agent. So create React agent. You can read the online research paper about what React agents are if you want to go into really deep detail. But essentially, a React agent can take actions and change which tools it uses and how it responds to outputs from those tools. Next up, we are going to create the configuration as well as the query that we are going to use to ask for information about competitive intelligence in this use case. And then that's pretty much the whole thing. So let me show you how it works. We're going to run this file, python3 main3.py. Let me show you how it works. So I already ran the python3 main.py file. So that is going to run our application. And what's going to happen is the agent is going to decide whether it wants to crawl and query a specific website. So it might choose to run it on the Anthropic News site to extract all the information from there, or it might decide to use a Google search to find recent news articles about the company. So you can see here that the agent first decided to do the Google search with the Tavoli search tool. And the results from that are here. You can see the articles that were returned, like the TechCrunch article about the company that we're trying to do the competitive analysis around. And next, the agent might decide now that I did the Google search, now I can go ahead and maybe search about more information on TechCrunch about Anthropic or something like that. So this agent is working and it can be expanded upon and you can build so much more functionality into it. You can use cursor to do it and it's super easy. Now you may think, oh, I would never be able to come up with this tool or with how you set up the Tavli search. I wouldn't be able to come up with this, James. I don't know how to do this, right? But the thing is, even though I'm a programmer, and yes, you do need to understand at least at a fundamental level or a base level of how this stuff works, because that's going to give you, the intuition is going to give you the higher level overview of telling Cursor what you need done. So for example, um, when I was building this, I didn't go and code all this myself. What I did is I went to the API, I don't know how you say that. And then there's this example here. You can see this code looks very familiar because this code is literally what we have over here in cursor. It's just what I did is I pasted it into the composer and I said, hey, based on this code and on the code around, let's see, I have to pull up Langchain agents, building an agent. So I found this information and then there was this example here basically this whole article on how to create a react agent so i took that pasted it into composer here maybe with some separators and that this is just an example i would post way more content than that and i would say based on how to create an agent combine the agent with the web crawler and give it as a tool give the agent the tool of using a web crawler and i would expand on that case and use english to tell Composer basically what I would want. And that's how all this code came out. Of course, I went and cleaned up a lot of it, but you can do exactly what I did here today. And you can expand this application, make it into a real product. And I hope this was really helpful for you. 